Okay, so uh, this this is in 2009. Uh, I'm just finishing uh, my bachelor my bachelor's at OCAD, and um, about to start my master's at York. And I'm in this conundrum because I'm I'm hating every single image that I've ever made, which is normal for me, I guess, because it's, it's, it's a way to just at least wanting to make better things. But there are two images from there that I actually, I tolerated, and I, guess, I, I can say I like them. And uh, this is one of them called Salesman, uh, I, which I made at the end of uh, my time at OCAD, and the next one is going to be uh, prosthetic legs and a flesh-covered wall. And um, uh, yeah, so I made those two images that I, I for some reason, was okay with, and so I, I went to York and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I was looking back at these two images, trying to use them as, as a stepping stone and trying to figure out like the commonality between the two of them. And it's, um, I finally realized that there's just this element of uh, camouflage in them and it's so apparent, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, I didn't take this image. And so yeah, just the, this idea of uh, things being disguised and, and masked and um, just blending into your surroundings and, and things like that. And, I, and it called for a lot of uh, interesting thoughts, so I, I decided to do some research about it. And um, uh, yeah, I read, I read this book and a lot of others. It took me like a year to do this research. And this one is literally called Camouflage, and it's by Neil Leach. And it had a, a lot of wonderful sources and pointed me to some really great things. And it also included uh, a bunch of anecdotes, one which I'll share with you about uh, Nelson Mandela, who I'm sure all of you know about, uh, <laughs> a, a president from South Africa, a uh, for, former president, and he was also an activist, like anti-apartheid activist, and uh, he was um, in prison for 27 years for his activism, and I think 18 of them, he was just under house arrest in some house in South Africa, and the story goes, um, when he got uh, when he got out of this house, um, he got the blueprints to it and gave these blueprints to an architect who built him an exact replica of this house. And I'm pretty sure he still lives in this replica of this prison that he was in. And a lot of people think that's kind of crazy, but the more you kind of think about it, the more it starts to make sense that um, we're, we have a tendency to just always go with like familiar things. And when presented with the unfamiliar, we, uh, we modify it to become familiar. And uh, it's just our ability to adapt to um, just undesirable conditions. And uh, it, this idea of, of going back to the familiar also happens in much simpler ways too. I didn't take this image, by the way. Uh, like uh, in a change room, like we always seem to go back to the same locker or um, going to the same restaurant. Like it's just for some reason we, we have this tendency to always go back to things that we know. And it also um, applies to, uh, well, a lot stronger in senses as well, in other senses. Like Proust was talking about uh, taking a bite out of like a, a, tea ca a tea cake and like bringing back all these familiar memories and uh, he was talking about smelling some awful smell in a bathroom, and I don't know, there was some sort of sexual connotation to it, but it also brought some familiarity and in, in, uh, ideas of, yeah, some sexual experience that he had. And uh, Leach also, who wrote that book, Camouflage, uh, was talking about how um, repetitive actions and mundane actions have this, this ability to, to make us think about home and, and just going back to the idea of home. So there was all these things that I was thinking about and uh, this is one of the images that I made thinking about uh, all those things that I just told you. It's called Mop and um, just literally the, when you're looking at it, you think the subject was camouflaged by the, just the repetitive action of mopping and has become the mop itself. Yeah. So uh, I also read, uh, I think that's the next slide. Yeah, another essay by uh, this, guy on a horse, his name is Roger Calwa, and he was a surrealist, and in the 30s he wrote a really, really good essay called Mimicry and Legendary Psychasthenia, and uh, it was just basically just talking about how mimicry works in the natural world, and uh, he made categories and stuff, and there was this one that was really interesting to me called Mimicry of Terrification, I didn't take this either, and um, um, it's an organism that just uh, takes on the, the form of something a lot more frightening than it actually is to just scare off predators. And so this butterfly is called uh, Caligo, and it just has this uncanny uh, resemblance to the plumage of an owl. So I thought that was really interesting. And I, uh, I saw this foliage one time on a synagogue when I was on a bus, 
and I thought it was really interesting because it looked like it amalgamated into a monster. So I, I came back and, and photographed it, and for some reason it just wasn't working with the images that I was making, so I redid it in my studio, um, which is the next image, and uh, I used uh, artificial lighting and, and artificial flowers to sort of make this monster on my wall. And it just, I thought it was perfect for mimicry of terrification, just kind of an ode to Kalwa. Um, what else? His key idea, which some people might think is, is totally out there, but uh, he said that camouflage is just to is, is useless, I didn't take this either, is useless, and it's a precaution, uh, an, an exaggeration of precaution, because um, predators hunt by smell more than they do by sight, so there's really like no reason as to why this is happening. So he was just trying to come up with these crazy ideas of, of why, just, uh, just trying to figure out why camouflage was occurring. This is uh, an image I made too called Stick Figure. And so he was saying either it's um, like a poetic way of making love to your environment, um, but uh, more so he thinks that it, it was, it's actually not that, but uh, a gradual loss of self-identity. So just over time, um, yeah, uh, this is another image I made. So over time, you just uh, lose a sense of your identity. You're, you have a problem distinguishing yourself from your environment. And I thought that was uh, really interesting. And so um, I sort of turned around. Instead of thinking about being the organism that's camouflaged, I was, I was kind of talking about uh, looking at something being camouflaged. And he called that loss of self-identity psychasthenia. And I compared psychasthenia to doing drugs and to looking at something and there's like a loss of uh, spatial awareness, like a collapse in depth. And um, yeah, I, I forgot to warn you guys that it's gonna end abruptly because this is the last slide and I have nothing else to say. <laughs>